Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt to- talk show. It is the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. And now we're in season five. Season five. In addition to our talk shows, we also post tutorial videos, virtual stitch-ins, and book clubs. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by our friends at InMart and QT Fabrics. You can learn more about them in the links in the show notes. So we are joined, this time by the Purple Fabrics from the Radiance line by Dan Morris for QT Fabrics. Love it. Purpley. It is, but I like this kind of explosion and the more symmetrical line thing. And well, the great thing about a print swirl. like this is that it shows you what colors can be friends with this fabric. Right, exactly. It does the work for you. Yes. Which is nice. Does. It does. I love it. I really like that one. Do we have more of this one? No. Dang it. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to cut a piece out of our set decoration. <laughs> I'm going to email somebody. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we also have the super fun iris thread, and this is Bright Tulip. It's cotton. What's the name of this color? This is Bright Tulip. Oh. I just said it. Cool. I feel real <laughs> listened to right now. <laughs> I guess I didn't realize you were saying this is Bright Tulip. I missed it. What did anyway. you think I was referring I to? I don't know. Cool. <laughs> I don't know what I was hearing. It apparently wasn't the right thing. It's 450 yards of awesomeness. It is. I like that. All right. I shall set it back appropriately. Okay. Okay. So, Lynn. Yes. What are we talking about today? We are going to be talking about uses for fabric postcards and some social media tips for crafters. (laughs) I don't know why that cracks me up, but it does. (laughs) Okay. We are joined by some fabric postcards to celebrate the launch of our newest online class, Quilted Fabric Postcards. Indeed. This is available now at learn.thestitchtvshow.com. Yes. And it is a class that shows you five different art quilting techniques. Yes. One of them could just be classified as just a regular quilting technique, but the other four are pretty arty. Well, n- no, they're all like sewing techniques. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. So, um, one, yeah, one's kind of arty. One. Yeah, we ease you into the art. The one. It's kind of in the middle. It's in the middle mm. of the class. Yeah. It's in the middle of the class, but it is kind of arty. So, um, do, you, do, I, do I show them now? Well, yes, we have them for on screen as well. Yes, we do. So the first one you'll learn is this crazy quilting. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just foundation piecing, but I go through how to do that. And then the next one is this really cool one with sequins that move. Or confetti. Or confetti. Yeah, that move. And then this is the arty one. This is how to create this background, and then some really easy thread painting and um, uh, applique. Applique, yeah. Fused applique, cheat applique. And then you do this one, which is just learning how to couch a little bit. And with a regular foot, not the fancy couching foot either. Right, totally regular foot. Um, an open toe embroidery foot. Mm-hmm. But this one also shows you how to create this background which I've seen in other quilts, so it's not necessarily an arty technique, but definitely. Um, And we use chalkboard fabric, little scraps of that. And then this one is a little more thread painting, and I show you a different technique in the thread painting than we did with the first one. And then um, some, just adding some beads for fun to make it look cute. So, and really fun, lots of instruction course I go through a lot of fun yeah. stuff and you will have just seen that image on the camera right of all five together right so in addition to that video class an exciting news coming up is national coloring day in the United States but we're going to celebrate it globally 
There you go. That sounds good. Yeah. So like we did the uh, color theory lecture for National Quilting Day back in March, this is going to be a live lecture, uh, one hour, Lynn and I, 10 a.m. Eastern on September 21st. It's a Saturday, so we should be able to hit Europe and uh, the late night crowd in Asia. <laughs> late night crowd. <laughs> But it will be available for replay afterwards. The cost is $5 before the 21st of September. Uh, and then the price will increase to $10 after then if you just want to uh, sign up afterwards. Now, if you purchase the class, but then you can't be there on that day, totally fine. You can just go watch the replay at your leisure at right. the $5 price. So uh, more details on that at learn.thestitchtvshow.com. And, of course, we'll have a blog post to, for it and a link in the show notes as well. Yes. So, so our first topic handily ties in to the things hanging behind us. Postcards. Postcards. So it's very easy to say, well, it's a postcard. Do you not post it in the mail? Yes. However, more uses. Well, I think that um, there are a lot of people who actually collect these. Mm -hmm. And postcard collecting has been around since the early 1900s. We're just taking it to the next level because I was doing a lot. I was doing some research about postcards um, in the last couple of days because I've been working on this class. And it started at the 1893 postcards, um, kind of started at the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. Oh, did you know? Good job, Chicago. Good job. They did a lot of stuff in 1893. Um, anyway, so that was... Uh, but the United States Postal Service, when they first introduced postcards, um, they felt that it should have a two-cent stamp charge, whereas another government um, postcard only had a one-cent stamp charge. Hmm. So mm -hmm. it was later in our history that they lowered the cost. So that's why postcards are were cheaper to send. I don't think they are anymore. Uh the last time I mailed a postcard, they were. So. Yep. Which was college. <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> I don't know that they are anymore, but. So maybe, maybe in the United States. I'm not sure if postal rates outside the U.S. Clarify. Oh, right. Yes. We're definitely talking the U.S. But, so collecting. That was another use for postcards that a lot of people do. And I know my aunt collected postcards, not fabric postcards, but there are fabric Postcard groups online, and mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people who trade them and do collecting, so they're fun. Now, I have used similar technique, but in a different size for gift tags. Yes, I think these are great gift tags. Handy around the holidays, because then you've got something a little more personalized. You could even sew a pocket into it and slip in a gift card if you want to. And I would just do, like, these are about four and a half by uh, five, um, I would just cut it in half, mm -hmm. and that would be the gift tag. Right. So it would be just like half of this side. So And then as you finish the edge, by. you can stitch a ribbon into it if you need a loop. Right. Yes. Gift tags are definitely a way to go. Right. And those can be used for either Christmas or, you know, Birthday. I keep a stack for birthdays or just baby shower gifts, things like that. And it's yes. another way to kind of personalize that, and especially if you didn't think someone maybe was quilt worthy. If you wanted to make them a little something, Here. I made you a gift tag. <laughs> well, and I think some of these postcards, you know, put a frame around it, go to the dollar store, get a frame, frame it, and then it's a piece of artwork somebody can hang on the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are definitely, you know, you don't have to put the glass over it if they've got beads no. or... Um, stuff that stands out, embellishment that stands out. You don't have to do that. So I would put it in a frame, and they look really cute. And then they're cute gifts for, um, you know, those last minute, oh, I need to go to someone's house, housewarming gift, uh, you know, where it's nice and it's handmade and it's, I just well, think those have a, the next level. And if you wanted to level up the frame, you can take strips of fabric you know, take the backing and the glass out and wrap the fabric around the frame, and then you've personalized that so it's not just a plain black or a plain whatever. Right, exactly. Well, you know, because I don't know, um, when you go to, when you're invited to somebody's house for dinner, you can bring, you know, like a wine carrier, a glass. I always try to be personable about it, so I think these make a nice kind of gift. And actually, when I've had Christmas parties before, 
I have a whole like little thing of these. And when people are leaving, I thank them for coming. And I'm saying, please choose one of these little Christmas postcards and please take it home. I'm telling you, the four-year-old at my last Christmas party was beside himself. He was like, oh, I can take one? I'm like, yep, you can take one. Oh, my gosh. He was like, he had to look at all of them to choose. It was a very important decision. Well, even in that way, if you attach a loop to it, then suddenly it's an ornament. If you have exactly. a Christmas tree. Exactly. It's a perfect ornament. Or attach it to a wreath or, you know. Oh, that would be great. You can do a wreath of... Like all the different, and you can do Valentine's, you can do St. Patrick's, you could do... Just get some real cute little clips. Yes. Like the little tiny baby size clothespins, which you can find in like the miniatures or like the doll section sometimes yeah. of a, a craft store. Right. Um, or you can just go old school with like the peg kind of clip, which you could then paint in festive colors or again, you know, wrap with fabric scraps. Well, and the other thing you can do for dinners especially if it's kind of more formal or more, you know, special occasion, is you could make these into place cards. So you can write the person's name on there, maybe a message, and then have them at your down. dinner. Oh, sorry. You said that. I'm just like, really? I really? Can, I sit here? can do that. <laughs> and then have them at their setting mm -hmm. so that they can take it home. And maybe use the back of it as their name and a little message. And the front of it be something that they could use, either put it on their tree you know. or... So, now, I know you've used the chalkboard fabric and the permanent chalkboard marker a lot. I do. What's I a good it. alternative if you don't have access to that supply? Because we don't want that to be a hindrance. Right. So, just get um, regular fabric, white, mm -hmm. white fabric, and use the uh, marker that will stay on fabric. My personal favorite is the Pentel... Uh, fabric gel for um, roller gel for fabric roller gel for fabric is my personal favorite i use it all the time um but i know that there are other um inks that will stay on fabric too cool so use that but if you can get this chalkboard fabric which honestly i've seen it at the big box store don't tell they'll sell it to you very expensively at a quilt store but I was noticing the other day when I was going to the big box, well, to a big box store that sells fabric and they sell um, upholstery fabric. Sometimes they'll sell fabric that is a tablecloth. And I noticed it was very similar to this vinyl black. And I'm like, we're calling it chalkboard fabric, but I'm telling you it was... Use as long as it doesn't table. have a veiny pattern on it, that's going to mess up how the writing looks. Um, but I think it adds interest to it, too. So I don't have a problem with that. So, um, But that could be another place. And then just get a, man, an eighth of a yard at 60 inches wide. A lot of postcards. That's a lot of, yeah, a lot of postcards. Um, also, I think these are would be good for, like, display signs. You know, make a little postcard and write whatever you're displaying for, like... You guys are going to think I give dinners all the time. I Do I? I do. Yeah, but lately. You used to. I Well, yeah. We've been busy. You've been keeping me busy. But I do a dinner. I do have dinners a lot at the house. So, but like to put little signs of this is Meatballs. what. This, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is what this meal is. Or, you know, I try to explain, but it's nice to have a little card there so people know what they are. I have hosted a lot of things. I love that, though. I love entertaining. I really do. If I if I had more money, I think I would entertain more because I like doing it. So one of the things that my mom does uh, with Christmas cards when the holidays come around is she takes a piece of ribbon and for one standard size door, which I believe is 36 inches, it might be 32 inches, been a while since I had my architecture classes, uh, will hang three strips of about an inch wide ribbon. And then as she gets greeting cards from friends or family, she'll just tape them on that. And now the trick is when you close the door real quick, they all kind of like flutter and hit you in the face. So be judicious about how fast you close the door. Or tape the ribbon <laughs> at the bottom. Or tape the ribbon at the bottom. But yeah. that's something you could do as well of, you know, get either a reusable ribbon like a grow grain or just something nice. It doesn't have to be the wrapping paper ribbon. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can, again, use, uh, I wouldn't necessarily use tape for it because you want to be able to take them down. Or painter's tape. 
painter's tape or yeah. the clothes pens and clip the cards to that. So if you want kind of a seasonal display, if you had a really big frame and just hung like three pieces of like a nice looking jute or rope or ribbon, mm -hmm. and then you could just clip your seasonal postcards to that for a little art installation. Okay, so on my personal mantle upstairs that we have for our fireplace, I actually took um, uh, stringed lights, mm -hmm. and they're not fairy lights. They have different bulbs on them that are kind of, I don't know, different. Um, and I actually paper I clipped a bunch of postcards that were kind of in the same vein. They're very similar... Uh, I think the one I'm kind of up there, but they're very similar. And I clipped a bunch of those on my and then strung it from my mantle. And I change it out. So like at Christmas, I'll put all the Christmas ones up. And then I have this kind of one every day that I just change out. Then when you turn the lights on, that's kind of looped from the mantle, it really makes it look cute. It's yeah. very nice. Just be careful if you're using traditional incandescent bulbs in those lights, that no, the back of the not. postcard is not touching those because that will create a fire hazard. Right, exactly. So we would recommend an LED string because those don't heat up. Yes, and this is not a normal. And it's not something I leave on all the time. It's just like, you know, a couple hours for a party or whatever. So you know where else that I maybe put postcards for a little fun pick-me-up? What? The inside door of my medicine cabinet. There you go. So, you know, I've got my daily pills, my makeups. Uh, but when I open it, it's just a plain back. And I thought for a while, like, well, that's kind of boring. And so I've got, there's one you gave me and another one I've made that I just, I have got some cute, like, washi tape, which is like a kind of a decorative tape. Right. And just taped it inside there. So I get a little fun note when I open it in the morning. Oh, that's neat. I'm glad the one I gave you is in there. Mm -hmm. So I talk to her every day. Um, so just, I think that's, <laughs> she, she's like, yeah, she face. does. She does all the time. Um, I'm trying to think what else I would use them for. I just think they're great little gifts. And they're, they and only require small pieces of fabric. So when you've got bits left over from trimming the backing, when you're done quilting something or you're done with a project, uh, you know, the base fabric is slightly bigger than a charm square, five inch square. But as long as you've got a decent foundation for some of these techniques, like you can go crazy with the embellishment. Well, and honestly, I draw all the time. So I, you know, I usually have a pen or a pencil or fabric with me. Um, so what I think is kind of cool is you can just take these, a little strip of fabric and I take it with me with a pen and then I just make these little sayings and then I just have a strip of fabric with all these little sayings on it and I cut them off and then I make a postcard with that saying on it or a postcard and this one in the class I actually chose some fonts and kind of trace the fonts for you I really do it with my um hand you know lettering or whatever but I know not everybody's comfortable with that so well likewise you could get the printable fabric that you can run through an inkjet printer exactly. and just get some experiment with some fonts that right. either come with your computer or right. find some online and but, just do mess messages that way. And so if I'm drawing a bunch of them, you know, then it's just when I sit down and go, oh, I've got some extra time. That doesn't happen anymore. But um, when I sit down and say, I need a quick, I love to make postcards. And one of the main reasons I love to make postcards is because I get into these big, long projects and creatively, that wears me out, and I need a finish. <laughs> it's like I need something that I can finish and say is done, and I could go, oh, look, I got something done. And postcards don't take long, so that's my my go-to in between these big projects I get involved in is making these little piece of artwork. And I just, I don't know, like it was not hard to pull these to hang up at all. There's more over there. <laughs> I do make them all the time. Yep. Awesome. So anything else? I think that's it. So now we're going to take a closer look at the postcards from the class, and we'll be right back. All right. So we're back, and our next topic is social media tips. For crafters and quilters. For all the people. Well, not all the people post all the same things that we might be talking about. Well, that's true. That's true. 
You, that's true. And to me, the number one thing is uh, be kind because oh, that's on my list. Behind all of these people be typing kind. are still people, and just because right. you may be with an anonymous avatar right. or a handle that doesn't have your real name in it doesn't give you license to be mean about things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and now that we are out on the interwebs and people have left unkind comments. Oh, yeah. Someone questioned if I was actually a woman. And I know you deleted that comment, but I, I saw it come through on the email. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure because I grew two people inside my body. And I know that is the required plumbing. <laughs> I did. I deleted that very quickly. <laughs> um, if they're unkind and they get posted on our stuff, I... I I delete stuff. Yeah. So I well, want, and it's our property, so yeah, we are allowed I do. to if not. If you're not kind, I delete it. Yeah. Um, somebody told me I was um, silly and unnecessary. <laughs> They've also questioned our hair at times. Yeah. You know, I've been living with this mess for 45 years now, so as good as it's going to get. So Maybe 46 years would be the magic decade. Uh, I don't know. But really, okay, so but that's for everybody. I think we should be kind to everybody. I mean, I think you should take your grocery cart back to the thing. I don't need Aldi to make me get my quarter back. I, I will do it without Aldi's. I don't shop there. So. I don't either because they make me have a quarter. That's why I don't shop there. And I just don't need that. Anyway, I don't. So, and I think you should... You know, open the door for people, and I think you should, you know, just be kind. Say thank you and please. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, thank you. Um, okay, but we're not here to no. lecture people. With, well, no, we're manners. not. We're not. So, but just be kind. Yes, but particular to our craft, there's a lot of photo sharing. And lots of times, yes. I've, what makes me happy is that I've seen a lot more recently, like when people post pictures from a quilt show, they're taking the time to also take a picture of the label that's I next to it to give that. credit. Yes. Because lots of times you're like, that's an amazing quilt. I'd love to know more about it. Who did that? Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, a nice rule of etiquette for taking pictures at a show is to like show the quilt in all its gorgeousness, but also give credit to the maker. Or just let the second picture be the tag. Yeah, exactly. Because we want to read about it, too. So I yeah. like that. Like, you don't have to spend all the time typing. You right. Just, be like, oh, just the second picture be the tag. Um, always give, that's one of mine on the list, always give credit. Mm -hmm. And I try to honestly, 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 if I've learned a technique from somebody, I'm telling you who I learned it from. Yeah. If I don't remember, I am so sorry. <laughs> I try to remember and tell you who I learned it from. Yeah, um, and I, I just think you should give credit where credit's due. So. And I have seen, and even outside of quilting and crafting, of people that have posted like an old photo, like a retro photo of something. I'm like, oh, you know, please, you know, post with credit if you know who took this picture, who did this artwork. Because inadvertently or not, many times if there is, you know, a signature on a piece of artwork and you take a picture of it, the signature can get cut off. We hope unintentionally. Lots of times it is purposefully just for someone not right. to acknowledge the maker. But someone worked hard on that, much like with yeah. your quilts. And it's the same reason we encourage you to make labels and label your quilt. So there's a record of, like, you put your energy and your time into making this thing. And as a maker, you deserve the credit for that. Well, and I have had some quilt pictures. Um, and And I care, but not enough to be legal about it, but um, I've had a quilt taken and used for marketing. Hmm. So I'm like, wait a minute, they didn't ask permission. So if you're going to use a quilt pattern, a quilt design from somebody um, for, a for, commercial. for commercial purposes, yeah. not if you're going to make it. You have permission to make all of our patterns. Go for it. Go bananas. <laughs> um, Please buy them first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Please buy them first. Um, but I had a, someone, it's that quilt right there. I had someone, I've heard through the grapevine that it was used in marketing for something. And I'm like, oh, man, that wasn't cool that they took a picture of my personal original design quilt. There's no pattern for it. And now it's being used for marketing. Yeah. So that I don't even... Yeah, that's just kind of dodgy to me. Yeah. So ask permission. Links, if possible. Links and links that work. Put <sighs> links that work. Check them out. Links, if possible, to give credit back or... Yeah. Lo and so, there's a lot of places where they won't let you do it, but I kind of get frustrated when I'm like... 
Well, there was a whole kerfuffle several years ago, particular to Pinterest, where they changed their policies. And Pinterest, what drives me nuts? It, yeah. Well, because if you do, if you do a search for like blue and white quilts, just because you want to get inspired to make a, a quilt yourself, and mm -hmm. A good number of the links will be sourced from Pinterest, but it kind of falls into like this Pinterest loop where all it is is pins of pins and there's no actual source. So you can't go to see like, oh, is this a pattern from someone that I could buy or right. yeah. who actually made this? I'd love to see if they have more pictures of or close different. up or something. I like their work. I want more patterns right. that they do. But because of how Pinterest works, there just seems to be just this endless loop of Pinterest links upon each other and there's no like original source. Yeah. Pinterest drives me a little nuts in that. Um so it's kind of hard to find where something came from or whatever. Yeah, but lots of times, um, even if you're just crediting, like, oh, f reposted from in like the n social media handle of the account that you found it from, will get you there. Because yeah. I know like links don't work in all the social platforms necessarily. Like it's not helpful on Instagram because it's not a clickable link. It's just a link. text. Yeah, but I I don't have a problem copy and pasting or whatever. No. Always give credit, ask permission, links that work, be kind, no spam. Yeah. That's hard. But so in what context do you mean no spam? I guess when I wrote this down uh, two days ago, uh, one of my cousins um, had posted this picture of a girl holding a quilt oh. with all of the college that she graduated t-shirts and I recognized it as a spam because this same woman holding this quilt has held every college T-shirt. And, and in the, uh, oh, and, and also Elvis, because a different friend of mine did the same thing and tagged yes. someone. And I had to leave a comment like, I'm so sorry, but this is a fake business that is just trying to steal your money. And they can't actually buy right. anything. So I wrote my cousin. I said, please do not buy anything from here. And here's why. And I know I mean, there's some friends of ours that have had pictures of their quilts picked up by this company, and they just put them on the same photo with this very nice-looking lady holding a quilt, but it's just, it. they photoshopped that picture of our friend's designed, original design quilt on there and said, you can buy this for 100 bucks, and it is a printed picture that's not quilted well, if you even get it. Otherwise, they just take your $100. Well, and, min it's, and many of these companies have been popping up more and more, I think, in the last oh, year. Oh, gosh, yes. And it's truly, for the most part, I would say 90% plus of the time, it is simply a scam where you think you're going to get this thing and, for 100 bucks. And, but you never hear from them again. Right. And they keep, it's very easy to set up a website. And oh, and they've changed site. names several times. Oh, They're yeah. still the same lady. Yeah. Yeah, they've changed names several times because this has been going on at least two years mm -hmm. that I'm aware of. Um, so that's, that's where I mean spam. And yeah. just be wary of, you know, I know we're all quilters or most of the people watching us are quilters, so we're not going to buy a quilt. Like, we know a quilt is not 100 bucks. Yeah. Especially, like, a Judy Niemeyer. I mean, I think there's been, like, Judy Niemeyer. Yeah. Pictures of her quilts that people have made that get put on these spam. Yeah, Cheryl Sloboda has a really good blog post about it. We'll link oh, to that in the show right. notes. Oh, that's That's good, yes. But that's what I mean by spam. Okay. Like, just, just be careful about... What you're reposting. What you're reposting. I mean, that being that said, said, you we can't catch everything all the oh, time. Gosh, no. And But the, the thing is, like, if you see a friend has posted that, be kind and say, like, oh you know, would you mind taking this down or just to let you know and and not to have like a huffy overblown reaction that you're trying to ruin their life because you pointed out that you're trying to save someone from this scam. So that uh, yeah. goes back on rule one, be kind. Right. So when I, when I posted to my cousin, I'm like, please don't buy this. This is a scam. I've had friends who've had original designs stolen and used by this company and you'll probably never get the quilt. It's not a real quilt. So yeah. if you need one, contact me. <laughs> that was for my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. She's not taking I'm not inquiries. taking orders. Cousins have different, you know. She has a lot of cousins. Oh, so it's I a do. pretty long list a, already. I have a huge amount. And I've got a couple of them who are like, I don't have a quilt. I'm like, okay. <laughs> we got some samples. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So, and my sister wants another one. I'm like, oh, Ange. <laughs> 
I love her. She's like, well, you haven't made me a quilt. And I'm thinking, lately? <laughs> I've made you quilts, just not lately. So anyway, mm, I do have a ton of cousins, but they're all awesome. But that could be a decent social media tip. You know, I, I just, I cringe when I see, like, I'll post a picture and then a random coworker that I'm just kind of barely, like, I know them through work, but we don't hang out outside of work. They live in a different city and they'll be like, when are you going to make me a quilt? I'm like, never. <laughs> You are not quilt worthy. For coworkers, like you must sit in a ten foot radius of me, <laughs> be having, be creating new life, or have cancer. And those people, I make quilts for. <laughs> That's a pretty limited or have pool. Cancer. Or have a cancer scare. I will admittedly okay. make a thing for a cancer scare, or like yeah. an illness or a surgery. Like, meh, right. you know. Yeah. But like, literally, the people that sit right next to me have removed. all gotten quilts from me. And like, well, the buffer's blown. Yeah. So unless we remove, reorg our desks, like. I've hit my limit. Like, we're done. We're done. Nobody else, and we're getting a quilt. I've got to do two baby <laughs> quilts. I've got to get a baby quilt done really soon. Hmm. 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 I know. I think I'm going to design a new pattern around it. Just so you know. Oh, I can share one of mine. Because I've done several baby quilts here recently. <laughs> no, she wants this certain thing, and I'm going to have to work. I'm going to have to yeah. noodle on that. A little bit. Wah, wah. wah, wah, wah. So be kind. That's my, like, that's the most important thing. Be kind. Yeah. And another thing is, if you have something negative to say about someone or a question that could be inappropriate in a public forum, don't, don't ask it publicly. So like, I would take say. Take that private. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I know not everybody answers private messages, but... But like, for example, as quilt pattern designers, if you buy our pattern, you have a question. In some cases, like totally okay to come to the Facebook group, What's Up Stitches, and ask be like, us. hey, I bought the pattern. And I have a question about this. That's okay. Totally cool. Please don't show up to that forum or on our public page and like put us on blast because you made a cutting mistake or you found a mistake. Like just be kind of like, oh, I think I found a mistake. And we'll be like, awesome, message us. We'll, we'll sort it out. And then if we and need we'll to do a correction, it. you know, we'll do we that. We totally will fix it. Yes. yes. Because we are humans. Yeah. And we make mistakes. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> Fortunately, most of the time, it, our mistakes have been on the cut too many of these pieces, which is the, or we gave you the right yardage, but didn't tell you to cut enough, but you still got enough fabric. That's been like, of all the patterns we've produced, I think yeah. two have gone out that had some oopsies in them. Yeah. And they haven't been catastrophic. Like, no, oh, goodness. No. No. <laughs> no. What was the macaroni and cheese box where it's oh, it said something, boil the macaroni and cheese, and then it, something about you put the water in, or it didn't tell you to put the water into the macaroni and cheese to mix it with the um, powder. And so she made it, and it was like this glob of, after she drained the macaroni, it was the way the instructions were written. She wasn't a good cook. And I'm not going to tell you who it was, but... I have no idea what you're talking about. It was about. a friend of mine. Never mind. Apparently, it's a completely weird story that I don't know. Yes. Apparently. <laughs> I'm so glad that it's out there on the internet, though. Just be kind about when I tell these weird stories that you can't... That this you is my don't kind understand. face. Is it? That's how I read all the comments. <laughs> Actually, we... And here's the thing. Real people read the comments. Yeah. Like. Real people sometimes delete the comments. I uh, guess I've deleted and, a few. And put, put that than... comment into their shame spiral, <laughs> which we talked about on a recent virtual stitch in. Like when you start remembering all the dumb things you've done back to age four. <laughs> Had stupid hair on the internet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, yes. Yes. And. Yeah, just be kind. Oh, seriously. Because we, I read, I would say, almost all the comments. Oh, There's I do too. Some... You read them on YouTube itself. I read them as they come through email. Yes, I read them on YouTube. Oh, I tried to delete that one so you didn't see it. Oh, no, I saw it. And then I went to, like, we should probably delete this. I'm like, I, what, it was so funny because I read that. I'm like, I don't, and it didn't hurt my feelings because it's so far of, like, yeah. If I had ever questioned my position I, as a woman, I, I might have been upset, I but I have never had I was that like, as. This is just not nice. I could see where like it would affect someone else, but I was like, that's that's real not right. But I was like, huh. 
I, I, my concern was like, let's just delete that because what because what I don't want to have happen is someone leaves a comment that is construed as mean or not kind, and then people that are fans of the show then jump on them, and I yeah. feel like that's not. Helpful. I don't want that either. Yeah. yeah. Because we don't yeah. need a mob mentality. Because here's my, and she's heard me say this so many times, I ignore inappropriate behavior. <laughs> I do. I. <laughs> and so when people are just unkind, I just kind of ignore it. <laughs> like, So I delete it and then just go on. I think that's a good adage everybody should take yeah. on. Well, and I one of the reasons. ignore inappropriate behavior. One of the reasons we even started this show was like, <laughs> well, A, we have fun together. Yes. But no, we don't. But this B, well, okay. yeah, well, she's dead to me after this wraps. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing season five started. <laughs> but one of the reasons we started the show was just to make connections to quilters in the online community because yes. we have the luxury of being close to several good guilds that we right. could join and connect with other quilters. But I know from my time in having a podcast when I was just starting to get into local guilds that I was like, I I need to find my people. And that and so we want our people to be kind to each other. Yes. And, and I think I think as a quilting community we are. Yeah. Like, really, as long as we've done this show, there are less than 10 yeah. that I've deleted. And we've got a lot of material out there. So this is not to our audience at all. It's yeah. just... We made a lot of dirt face on the internet, guys. <laughs> I see. <laughs> but I'm in other, you know, things where people... Uh, I'm like, oh. Yeah, there's some so groups that just... I just ignore inappropriate yeah. behavior. <laughs> Yeah. This should be on a t-shirt. I ignore inappropriate behavior. You're just inviting inappropriate behavior with that on a t-shirt. Um, so I would recommend against true. it. That's true. <laughs> so anyway. Well. Yay. Now our, we're done. We are. So are you more of a social butterfly or are you a little shutter shy? You can let us know. Leave a comment on our blog or the YouTube episode or... In our previously mentioned Facebook group, What's Up Stitches? And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by Inmart and QT Fabrics. Find links to these wonderful companies in the show notes for today's episode. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't to forget... Don't to forget, don't forget to turn on notifications on YouTube. The next virtual stitch in is Friday, September 13th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. Our next book club episode is August 30th. And don't forget about the National Coloring Day quilt lecture on September 21st. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase fan gear, quilt patterns, and video classes. Tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends.